Hey guys, I am really excited to introduce you something. So it's like early 30 on Thursday morning, February 4th. For the past lots of days, here I'm gonna explain myself and where I'm at. In the past, I, I believe like six months, um, I have felt compelled to, um, there you go, I have felt compelled to start something like this. I have procrastinated thoroughly, so I wanna introduce myself, and then I'm gonna go into the story behind this. I'm not gonna take up too much of your time, but this is special to my heart, and I feel like I need to let you know that. Um, my name is Laura Mendenhall, and I, I've, I've wanted to start a online Bible study for a long time. Want is a really strong word. Thank you guys so much for joining on. It means so much to me that other like-minded women are desiring to be fed. Um, I'm telling you honestly, I'm not a scholar. I am not some like phenomenal teacher, I, and I'm wearing my PJs. I'm not even like someone who would... I used to be, and I feel like maybe I'm really rusty, but I'm not somebody who would get up and be confident even leading a Bible study at church, much less opening it up to the world on something public like Periscope. So I see that you guys are on, and I so appreciate it. My name is Laura Mendenhall. I currently live in Florida, and I have two sweet baby boys, and we live in a two-bedroom apartment, and it's amazing, but every time that I wake up early, somehow they know right so somehow they know so my intentions were to wake up this morning um kind of you know review and go over what we want to discuss but every single time that happens my children wake up like they know they're like mom's up we gotta play it's play time so literally i was on the couch five seconds ago that's why i was late and my toddler woke up and he was like i want to watch mickey mouse and so i had to put him in the bed i know right thank you for the heart because you guys understand he got in the bed with um, with Nick, and I was like, okay, mom, is going to be back. So literally, do you guys know where I'm sitting? Look, this is my determination. This is my, like, hey, I will do this because God put it on my heart, but I am in my garage sitting on top of our boat. Okay? <laughs> like, okay, I want to spin this around. Bee! This is my garage. This is our boat. Are you guys thinking I'm hilarious? I am so transparent and open because I don't really know how else to be. I don't, I'm not going to pretend to have like a special office place, war room, because I don't have room in my house, but this year we're going to buy a house. But that's not the point of this Bible study. The point of this Bible study, it is, it's like a mommy hideaway. I actually might do this from now on. Sitting on a boat's not too bad, right? Thanks, Amber, for sure. But since July 2015... Um, I went to an annual conference with a company that I work with, and God put on my heart that, okay, Laura, if, you know, what if you took this opportunity to lead these women, and obviously, like, I'm, I'm providing business mentorship and health and fitness goals and coaches, um, I'm, I'm, I'm helping people in the health and fitness industry and also to build their own business online, but taking it a step further and trying to use the ounce of influence God has allowed me to have in a way that would sharpen myself as well as maybe um, sharpen somebody else. And I thought, no, God, I can't do that. I'm intimidated. I'm not a scholar. I can't even speak straight. Like, I don't have a place for it. I'm a hot mess. My mom hair. And God said, do it. Like, just do it. And then I started making excuses. Well, I can't wake up in the morning because every time I wake up in the morning, thanks, guys. Every time I wake up in the morning, my kids wake up in the morning. I just can't do it. I can't do it. And it's not just a matter of doing this Bible study. It's about obedience in every area of my life. I would make excuses. I wouldn't wake up in the morning and study the Word because of X, Y, Z. Or I would get distracted. Or since I was trying to, um, you know, check on Bible studies on my phone, then I would end up getting on Facebook. And it was this complete distraction. But I am committed to, to my growth and to my God that I will be here 7 o'clock every Thursday morning. Because I want that discipline. I'm hungry. I want to desire him. So today, we're going to be going over James 1, 1 through 12. I actually started this with my Bible study group at church. And it's by Francis Chan. I don't know if you guys know him. But Francis Chan is an amazing author and you know pastor and leader of the Lord. I honestly, I want to show you guys his video clips at the beginning. Because I feel like, you know, opening it up and not just being my words, especially on something just like Periscope, that 
we want to see his perspective and I want to hear from him so this Bible study from this point forward it, you know it might be about 20 30 minutes long for you know after the video even but I want you to just listen or stay with me or drink your cup of coffee and just open up your Bible right alongside with me and we're gonna get better at this but as for today I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys I'm gonna show you my screen I'm gonna show you guys the video that he is leading and then we're gonna discuss it okay so here's my heart I'm a normal like suburban mom uh, 30 years old live in Florida have two boys um, literally just wanting to hold myself accountable to my Bible studies because I really feel like God wants to set me apart and in a good way like that's what holiness means that God doesn't want me to be happy he wants me to be holy and holy doesn't mean that I'm supposed to be a nun holy means that he just wants me to be different so here I am wanting to be different than maybe the world or maybe other people who would make excuses different than I was yesterday who made tons of excuses so God I'm here I'm willing and I want to listen okay here we go guys I'm gonna show you this video give me some hearts if you guys can hear and see this okay I have the honor of walking with you through the book of James, um, an amazing, amazing book of the Bible. It's about true faith. And I think part of uh, what makes it so amazing is who James is writing to. You see it right there in that first verse, the 12 tribes in the dispersion. You can read about that in Acts chapter 8. It's, it's when the persecution got so great there in Jerusalem that these people just had to run for their lives and now they're just dispersed everywhere and James is writing them encouraging them and reminding look this is about true faith this is about something that's worth dying for and so the first thing he talks to them is about these trials about all these different things that are happening in their lives and he says a very interesting thing he says count it all joy my brothers when you meet trials of various kinds for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness so he's saying count it all joy okay all this stuff that's going on count it all joy even though you're surrounded by all these different trials because he says you know what it's actually this testing of your faith that creates a perseverance in you it's it's making you stronger more steadfast and he says, let perseverance have its perfect work in you so you become mature and complete, not lacking in anything. He says, these trials that you're going through, this isn't a waste. This isn't even a coincidence. This is something God wants to use in your life. And that's so good for us to hear today, whatever we're going through. I mean, most likely what we're facing today doesn't compare to what they were facing back then consider it all joy because it's the testing of your faith and it is going to make you stronger and this this term for testing is an interesting word because it's it's a term that the silversmiths would use back then where they would test silver and the way they would test silver is they put a bunch in a pot and they would uh they would heat it up with this fire and what happens is at a certain temperature all of the impurities the dross they would call would rise to the surface and the silversmith would would would, would just kind of scoop that top layer off and then he would heat the silver up again and he would do this over and over again until the silver was tested or pure and the way he knew that the silver was actually tested was he would look down and he could see his own reflection in the silver and, and I just find that such a beautiful picture because the idea of these trials in our lives, he says, is God testing you, purifying you. And as you go through them, the idea is one day he could look down and see his own reflection. Like, like you're becoming more and more like him. That's the idea of being mature and complete, not lacking in anything. That's God's goal for me. That's God's goal for you is he wants me to be a reflection of him. He wants to use the trials in my life so that I persevere through them and I rid myself of those impurities. Just like Jesus was suffering, I become more and more like him in that suffering. 
And so often we don't think about that. And so often in the Christian life, it's just built as, oh, follow Jesus. He'll make everything wonderful. He'll take away all your pain. He'll make you rich. You know, it's like, no, it's just making you happy. He wants to make you holy. He wants you to be a reflection of him. And it's the trials, it's the sufferings that make us more and more like Christ. Have you ever thought of that as the goal of your life? say, God, I want to be just like Jesus at the end of my life. And so whatever trials it takes, give it to me because I want to become more and more like him. Someone explained to me like this. It's almost like. Oh, no. Okay, well, when you bake a cake, all the different ingredients that you put in, like eggs and flour and butter and just all this gross stuff, you, you don't really taste each of those individually. It's about mixing them all together and, and putting them in the oven and out comes this end product. See, that's God's desire for us. So often we don't think about this. We don't think about the end result. But he says, I want you to be mature. And, and so sometimes these ingredients that he puts in, may, they may not taste that great to us. He's like, no, let it do its work. It's, it's building character in you. It's making you stronger. And it's going to make you more like Christ. In verse 5, he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. He's saying, if you don't have the wisdom to understand that these trials are actually for your benefit and they can actually be a good thing, then pray and ask God. He'll give you, he'll give you the wisdom that you're asking for. He'll give it to you generously. But in the next verse, he says, but if you pray, don't doubt. He says, if you're, if you doubt, he goes, you're, you're like a double minded man. You're, you're like a, a wave of the sea just blown and tossed by the wind. But instead you have to pray in faith. And then he, he continues just talking about how the suffering can be a good thing. In fact, sometimes the riches are the things that are unstable. It's like, man, when, when life is so easy and so good, recognize that that may not be the best situation for you. Because they're like flowers that could be here one day and it just withers and it's gone the next. And then I, I love how he closes it. In verse 12, he says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. He says, blessed is the man who perseveres. You make it through these difficult times. And remember who he's writing to. He goes, get through this. He goes, because if you can persevere through this testing, okay, if you get through this test, he says, you'll receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. It's interesting that he would use that phrase, love him. Those who make it through the test, he says, are those who actually love him. It's easy to love God if he just gives you everything that makes you feel so good and makes your life so comfortable. But what about when he says, you know, I want to put trials in your life because it's going to produce this character in you and you're not down on that earth just to have a good time and just to be free from pain. So persevere through those trials. Allow God to use them to purify you. He says, because when you've made it through, you'll receive the crown of life or the crown which is life that God's promised. It's talking about that eternal life where there'll be a place where all this pain will be gone. But for now, we persevere. And you, thank you so much for sticking with me. Thank you so much, guys. I see that you're on. I appreciate your diligence in watching that, even though it's kind of, you know, rigged. Here is, here's my heart. You guys heard him, and I don't know if, you know, if you yourself have actually read that yourself, or if this is a book of the Bible that is new to you, or if the Bible is new to you overall. I feel like each morning or each day um, for us to really dive into the Word, we should approach it as if it is new to us, because God wants to teach us new things in every tidbit of the Bible. And in James, it's one of my favorite books of the Bible, 
in the first couple of verses, he's sitting here telling us, when troubles come our way, consider an opportunity of great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, when you're going through a struggle, when you're going through a trial, when you feel friction in your life, he's saying that your endurance has a chance to grow. I feel like the Bible is like the greatest leadership book of all time, right? It literally is like God is the author of the greatest leadership, personal development, um, you know, inspiring, deep down growth book of all time. And so wherever you are in your life right now, if checking out the Bible and digging deeper is something that you know that you want to do. If you're hungry for that, then I'm so glad that we're doing it now. But if you literally just want to grow as a person, I'm going to challenge you to pick up a Bible or, you know, look at it on your phone and study it right along with me because I'm sitting here telling you that this lesson that James was teaching us for Every trial that you go through, realize that you are going to have your chance to grow. So let it grow when your endurance is fully developed. You will have perfect and complete. You will be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I am in love with that because I feel like it's such a clear depiction of how God wants to prune us. Isn't it funny that even at the beginning of the Bible study, even at the beginning, Francis Chan was talking about the process of um, purifying iron, purifying metal. He's, it's called smelting. Is that a weird word? Smelting. Smelting. So what these um, blacksmiths would do is they would literally heat up this metal, heat it up so thoroughly that anything that was impure would rise to the top and they would scrape it off. And it would, they would heat it up again, heat it up again, heat it up again. It would rise to the top and they would scrape it off. They would do this process so many times until the person could look into that metal and see their reflection. If you take that process, and we just read James 1, 1 through 12. If you take that process of God refining the metal, how can he refine us? If you are going through a struggle or a trial in your life, and if you're not yet, you will soon because that's life. But I'm, I'm telling you guys that God is going to heat your life up sometimes. He's going to make sure there's friction. He's going to make sure that if, if you feel like you've been coasting or if you're trying to like sit back and get comfortable, he's going to make things interesting because he wants to refine you. He wants to refine his children so we are the best we can be. Just like in life, if you're going through and you have a fitness goal, okay, since I'm in the fitness world, if you have a fitness goal, you're doing those lunges, you're doing those squats, you're pumping that, you're jumping around in cardio, you're going to feel that burn, but what's it going to do? It's going to make you stronger. Just like if you're opening up your life and your heart to the word, just like if you're trying to study him and be like him more, which he's asking us to imitate God. I think that you're going to go through struggles and trials. I don't know whether that means struggles and trials with your own emotions or internal battles. I don't know if that means with your kids. I don't know if that means with your health or somebody else's health. I don't know whether that means finances. But in everything, he wants us to then turn, rely on him because he will help our endurance grow. He will help our perseverance stay strong. He will get us through whatever refining process he's desiring. Capiche? Give me some hearts if you guys can relate to that. So I'm going to ask you two quick questions and you can either chat it out or you can just give me some hearts if you agree because this last section of the Bible study, it's just going to be like an application, um, an application of what James is trying to tell us and how we can truly live it out because I am loving this study. I'm loving how Francis Chan pulls it apart, and maybe even after I close out in a few minutes, you guys can go back and read James 1, 1 through 12 yourself. That would be a great challenge for you because I think that it's important you're restarting your Thursday morning off on just, you know, praying that God would open up your heart to read it and learn how to apply what he's teaching you. Maybe you would have greater endurance. Maybe you would feel stronger. But a way that we can live it out is... Some people complain a lot, okay? Some people, if they're going through a hard time or if, they're, if God wants them to be smelted, that our human tendency is to complain or whine or to compare or to pout. But he doesn't want us to do that. What he wants us to do is to consider it pure joy. They're going to like punch somebody in the face if they're like 
is pouring salt in your wound or if they're happy all the time and you're having a bad day. But he literally wants us to consider it pure joy because the trial that we're going through is going to make us stronger. Think about that in every area of your life. If you're going through a trial, whether it's in your career, in your personal life, in your family life, if you surrender it, give it over to God, trust that he's going to help you make the right decisions. He's going to make you stronger at the end. That's why you can consider it pure joy. That's why you can consider it an opportunity that you're like, okay, cool. Like I feel you turning up the heat, God. I, I feel this, this, um, you know, struggle coming and I, I want you to help me get through it. And he will answer your prayers. So in the midst of us going through trials, in the midst of us going through struggles, everyone does. Like I said, if you're not going through one yet, you're going to soon because that's life. Um, and God knows that, you know, you're listening to this. <laughs> um, so I'm going to ask you this. Sometimes when you're going through a struggle, um, it's easy to reflect all on yourself. It's easy to be like, woe is me. Oh my goodness. I'm in pain. Look at me. I'm so sad. Misery loves company. Let me tell everybody. That is not what God wants us to do. God wants us to first and foremost give it over to him. But how can we take that emotion that we're dealing with going through these struggles and apply it to lifting somebody else up? It's, it's the same concept of when you're down, you need to lift somebody else up so you can lift yourself up. I want us to be givers this week. I want us to find somebody either through email, through phone, through text, or in person. And instead of, um, instead of complaining to them about what you're going through, I want you to ask them, what, what do you, what's God teaching you? Is that weird? Like maybe it's a, another Christian or maybe it's just somebody who doesn't really I have a faith, but ask them, hey, are you going through anything right now? I'm going through some things. I'm not going to complain about it, but I'm telling you that James 1, 1 through 12, I'm reading it right now, and I'm learning a lot. That would be completely out of my comfort zone, and maybe you're thinking, all right, tune out, exit out, not listen to Laura anymore, but instead of taking a chance to complain about the trials you're going through, how about pay it forward and help somebody else go through a trial? Other people might need to hear the same exact lesson, and it's our chance, and it's a cool thing to tell them. So I think it's that's a good challenge, and I'm like, my heart's palpitating right now thinking about bringing it up to somebody in person, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept my own challenge because I just feel like we need to help, right? Like, we need to help other people, and I truly believe that the Bible is help, and if the Bible is the best leadership book ever, ever written, if somebody's going through a hard time, they should never be offended by me sharing the truths and the leadership lessons of the Bible. It just so happened to be written by God <laughs> and through people, and I'm going to share it. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it. I'm going to be bold. So that's my first call to action. That's my first like challenge for us in the week is to reread this, soak it in, journal it out. If you don't journal, buy yourself a journal, make it pretty, do whatever you need to do, and wake up with me on Thursday mornings and walk through James. Not because I'm some scholar, not because I'm going to tell you anything, but maybe this is holding us accountable to open our hearts up to read and to study and to be hungry. And that's what God wants. God just wants us to show up because he promises to meet us. He promises to hear our prayers and he promises to show up. It's kind of like God's always there waiting for us. But we have to say, okay, I I'm going to open up this word now. I want you to teach me. We can't just expect God to flow out blessings and flow out, uh, you know, all of the answers to our prayers and flow out good feelings. God is not Santa Claus. God is God and he wants the best for us. And sometimes that means we have to be refined. Um, so last thing is in our prayer life, I want us to consider, consider others, you know, who are going through difficulties. Um, again, sometimes when we're going through a hard time, it's easy to reflect on ourselves, but let's take it a bit further. Let's allow God to use this lesson we're listening to and lift up somebody else. Okay. So can you guys give me some hearts or chat in the chat box? If you know somebody right now who's going through a trial themselves, maybe they're being refined. Maybe, um, they are struggling, whether it's with finances, with their marriage, with their kids, um, with their career or just with their emotions. I would love to hear if anyone else knows somebody who is struggling in an area of their life. And if you're not like, if you don't think about other people in that way, maybe it's maybe that's a clue that we need to consider other people other than ourselves. We need to be mindful of maybe one or two people who are hurting that we can pray for. That's a call to action number two. Number one is to lift somebody up. See how I'm like, I'm a doer. And my reflection and my call to action from this is obviously to 
um, soak it in. But I know personally the best way to apply it is if I help somebody else understand it. So first of all, I want you to reread this and I want you to tell somebody else about it. Okay, just one person, don't forget about it. And then while you're telling somebody else, or maybe you're talking to your mom, your sister, whoever, um, pray for them. That could be private, okay? It doesn't have to be loud and flamboyant, but pray for them in, in private, maybe in your journal, and just lift them up to God and ask them, you know, ask God, hey, I don't know what they're going through, but I can tell that they're down lately. I'm just going to pray that you would help them find answers. I'm going to pray that they, their heart and mind and ears would be open to seek you, that as they're going through this struggle, they would their faith would grow, that their faith would expand, that I could even expand with my faith while I walk through the struggle because I know, God, that you have good plans for me or I would not still be breathing this breath. Okay, so that's my prayer for this week for you guys, and that's how we're going to end, okay? So it's a 30-minute Bible study, and that's how we're going to end today. I'm, you might think this is weird, and that's totally okay. I'm actually going to close in prayer. Um, if you've never done that before, um, you know, through a live online Bible study, you don't have to, do, it's nothing, you don't have to like, you know, sit on your knees, you don't have to bow down. God hears you if you talk to him like this, hey, what's up? God hears you, you know, as you're driving down the road. But for the sake of eliminating all distractions, whatever you're doing right now, I'm going to ask you to focus. I'm going to ask you to, you know, put away whatever else you might be touching or holding to uh, maybe even flip over the phone right now so you're not looking at me. Um, maybe not even focusing on uh, anything. Okay, so I don't know what's going on in your life. If you're getting ready for work, if you are running around chasing your kids, if you're getting dressed or if you're drinking your coffee, go ahead and just flip over the phone. Um... And just let's pray together, honoring him, talking to him, and just asking him to help us, okay? Dear God, thank you so much for this time. And thank you, God, for teaching me personally, God. And thank you for not giving up on me when I told you no over and over again to open my mornings up to a live slow Bible study. Forgive me of that, God, because I know that with that obedience, um, you will teach me, and that's what I desire. God, I know that in the midst of this month or this year or this week, you, you want us to be set apart, that you want us to seek you, that you want us to learn because we can be more like you when we learn more about you, God. And I appreciate you um, teaching us things from James 1 through 12 this morning about perseverance and endurance, God. And I know that there's so much more that we could have dug into. But Father, in the application of this study, I'm asking you to work in us and give us the strength and the confidence to go out there and think of somebody else. Because we might be going through a struggle and a trial right now, God. And I ask that you would give us the strength and the faith to surrender that to you. And while we're surrendering it to you, to open our hearts and minds up to somebody else who might be struggling. Because if we're struggling and we need to be lifted up, how beautiful of a picture it would be if we could lift somebody else up. So God, help us be mindful of somebody else in our life who is struggling and let us share this same study with them. Just in a quick, hey, this is a great verse for somebody who is struggling because you will be stronger at the end. And God, on top of maybe mentioning this study to somebody else who is in pain, I'm asking that you help them in their pain. I'm asking that you open up their hearts and ears and mind to trust you, and that's hard, God, because you seem invisible and you seem so far out there, but I know personally, I feel you, I see you, I can, I can, I know that you're in my life and I desire that same affirmation in others. I know that you're present, I know that you love us, and I know that as I continue to seek you, you will answer my prayers and shape me and mold me and smelt me into that exact woman of God you want me to be. All right, God, thank you so much for this morning. Um, amen. Okay, thank you guys so much for showing up with me. My heart is full. Um, again, we're going to be here every week. And you guys rock. Thank you so much. Go read James again. <laughs> okay, bye guys.